I'm delighted to be here with Abby and Mary, who are two digital nomads copywriter based out of England and Spain. And Abby and Mary will be sharing their story and give you advice on how to become a digital nomad copywriter. After Abby and Mary's presentations, we will have Andrew and Chris from Insure Nomads, who are our partners. And they will be telling us about their story and how they build a service that helps protecting digital nomads when they travel abroad. So as Giacomo said, we'll be presenting on how to become a nomad copywriter and get paid to write and travel the world. So our goal was to make this like super actionable for you guys so that you can walk away with um, a bit of know-how and knowledge to know how to write copy and land your first clients within uh, as little as five days. So without further ado, Cool. Okay. So um, we're going to go ahead and assume that you're here because you're a digital nomad already, um, or you hope to become a digital nomad, um, and you're looking for um, new ways to make money online. Um, we're going to also assume that you enjoy writing. So copywriting is a popular career among people that like to write. Um, so you'd probably like to find out how, how to get paid to do more of that. Um, and you want to make a good living um, while you're traveling or living abroad. Oops, sorry. Um, so Abby is a launch copywriter for Course Creators. Um, she's one of the most talented copywriters I know. Um, she's based in Cambridge, England, um, but she's done a lot of traveling in her day. Um, she's, fun fact, never had a real job. She's been freelancing uh, since she got out of college. She landed her first copywriting job while working as a journalist in South China. Um, and since she's been in business, she's generated, uh, a lot of money, like multi, multi six figures for her course creator clients who include, uh, Amy Porterfield and copy hackers. Oh, thank you for the lovely introduction. <laughs> um, so Mary, um, is a conversion copyright for creative entrepreneurs. Um, fun fact, this lovely picture of Mary was taken a few weeks ago uh, when she came to visit me in England. Um, so right now she's based in Barcelona. Um, I believe in a couple of days she's going to Florida and then she's going to be in Thailand in January. So she's kind of all over the place. Um, <laughs> she's been working remotely for six years. Um, and Mary writes personality pack copy that creates meaningful connections between her clients and their customers. So Copywriting is about sales, and we're going to talk more about that shortly. Um, but for Mary, it's really important um, that it's not it's not about say manipulating the sale. It's all about creating that meaningful conversation and empowering people to make the right decision for them. Um, so Mary has written copy for superstar brands and even some celebrities. Um, I think she's signed some NJs, so I'm not <laughs> sure how much I can name drop. I will say that recently. Um, she wrote copy for uh, a law team um, headed by someone that recently had a Netflix film made about them starring Judy Roberts. <laughs> so maybe you know who that is. Um, and Mary is obsessed with reading the latest consumer psychology books, all things marketing. So she has pretty much an unlimited supply of copywriting tips. that I'm sure she'll be happy to share with you if you hit her up after the presentation. <laughs> Thank you, Abby. It's very kind. Um, okay, so many of you are probably wondering, what is copywriting? Um, so for those of you that don't, don't know, copywriting is not the same. It's not blogging or content writing. There's definitely some overlap, but content writing is more about um, like entertaining and educating an audience. And copywriting is more about getting people to take action. So it's the act of writing words that get people to take action, to put it really simply, um, also known as like salesmanship in print, um, saleswomanship in print. <laughs> um, it's not just about selling, it's about creating a connection with the audience, like like Abby was saying. Um, it's about creating a meaningful connection, um, you know, getting people to really identify with um, the words on the page. Um, great copywriting relies on customer research. It really, like first and foremost, the first rule of copywriting, um, is knowing your audience, um, psychology and data. So all of that kind of play a role in, in, uh, copywriting. Um, so you'll kind of, if you're really interested in copywriting, you'll learn those kind of gradually as you get into things. 
Cool. Um, so copywriting is literally everywhere. It's the words on billboards, the ads you see on telly um, when you're scrolling through your Facebook. So there, there are so many different things you can write about. There's no limit um, in terms of niche. You could literally you could write copy for a music festival. Um, you could write copy for, um, for Spotify, literally anything. Um, so um some of the the Oops, things sorry. you write about um you can write landing pages which is when you click on an ad and it takes you to one page um sales pages um mary sorry i'm gonna have to ask you to quickly take over this because my laptop is about to die um i've got to plug it in so could you take yes, over yes. the slide cheers yeah um just want to make sure everyone can still see the whole screen because i think something happened to the screen can everyone see uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. Sorry. Something just happened in Zoom. Um, yeah. So as Abby was saying, um, really, there's unlimited things that you can write about as a copywriter. So there's really something for everyone out there. Um, personally, I like to focus on like sales pages, landing pages, and emails, um, and you know, and Facebook ads. And I think Abby does a bit of the same, um, as well as like we both do a bit of website copy, um, VSL, which is like stands for video sales letter. It's kind of like the video, um, you write like the video scripts. Um, that's, uh, so there's really just like so many different things you can do. You can write product descriptions for e-commerce sites. So yeah. Literally anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So why is copywriting so lucrative? I'm sure many of you might be asking that question. So, uh, copywriting is tied to ROI, which stands for return on investment. Um, basically because uh, when you're writing copy for a client, uh, you're getting them sales um, or you should be getting them sales. Um, so there are many clients are willing to pay good money for, for a copy. Um, another reason is that copywriters are highly in demand. Um, there's way more like business owners out there than copywriters and pretty much every business needs copy. Um, and then another reason is that like a lot of people just hate writing copy, especially their own. So they're willing to, to pay people for it. So if you like to write, then uh, copywriting can be a really good um, and lucrative career for you. Cool. Um, so what that means for you, it means um, even as a brand new copywriter, you can and you really should be charging a minimum of $35 an hour. Um, and the the great thing about copywriting is that you can scale that really quickly. So um, after we we were always taught after you've done a few projects, bump your rate up by twenty five dollars an hour. Um, so within six months, um, you could be charging sixty dollars. And that's we're not pulling these numbers out of thin air. This is based on what the average freelance copywriter is earning, um, which is usually more um, than if you're working full time. Um, so in our network of kind of semi-experienced copywriters, three to five years, and to be honest, we're probably being a bit conservative there. I'm um, probably more like, even after the first year, the first couple of years, um, the average day rate is $2,000. Um, so that's if basically you say to your client, um, I'm going to join your team for the day, you hire me for a day, you work six to eight hours on the copy, um, and you charge two thousand dollars for that. Um, so when you're when you're charging that that rate, um, you you don't need to work forty hours a week. I mean, not even close to make good money. If you um, want to make four thousand dollars a month, that could just be um, two two days. Um, obviously, when you're starting out, you might not go straight to charging that, but you should you could still um, be charging. $300 for, for a day, bump that up slowly. And as Mary said, um, it's so tied to return on investment. So because copywriting is linked to sales, if your client is selling a product um, for $50 and they sell a thousand, um, that's $50,000. So paying you $2,000 a day, that makes so much sense um, from, from their, their viewpoint. Um, so yeah, um, if you take one thing away from this, it's that even if you're brand new, like you can be charging, you can be charging, you should be charging. Um, just the fact that you can write, um, you're worth $35 an hour of minimum. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other thing is that anyone can become a copywriter. So I really mean that, like you don't need to have a college degree or formal education. Um, you really like 
just anyone can become a copywriter. Um, as long as you really love to write, um, that's obviously important. Um, otherwise you might hate your job. <laughs> um, being a great listener and, uh, really empathetic, um, being interested in psychology and human behavior is another trait of a great copywriter um, and being someone that's just continually learning because as a copywriter, you're always going to be, um, it's just really, you're always going to be needing to like, um, not needing to, but if you want to kind of um, increase your rates and just become uh, a better copywriter, it's super important to always be learning. So, um, yeah. Um, okay, so... We've talked about what copywriting is. What is a nomad copywriter? Um, so when we when we talk about nomad copywriting, we we mean freelance. So you're not working for one company. Um, you're taking on usually a mix of clients. And I mean, you you could still work for for one client um, or an agency. Um, but the point is is that you're in control of your timetable, of your lifestyle, and of your income. If you want to. Um, spend six months just making absolutely as much money as possible and working as much as you can you can totally do that and then take time off um if you want to just make enough to get by um you can do that too the point is that you're in control and um you get to schedule um what what works the um the timetable that works for you so if you um prefer to get up late I do I'm more of a night owl than a morning bird then you can work evenings um it's very much um it's a flexible career um it's freelance um and yeah it ties in with the the freedom that we value as digital nomads yeah so there are really three steps to becoming a nomad copywriter that we've found uh, based on our experience so first master the copywriting basics um notice we don't say like you know, everything you need to know about copywriting. It's really just nailing down the basic principles. Um, and then from there, you can land your first clients. Um, and then uh, lastly, become a digital nomad, which I guess many of you are may already be digital nomads. Um, so, but yeah, then I guess you have a head start. <laughs> cool. Okay. So we're going to quickly walk through step one, um, mastering the copywriting basics. So um, you don't need to know everything to get started. Um, just the fact that you enjoy to write, enjoy writing and that you like writing automatically gives you an advantage. OK, um, so it's a good idea to familiarize yourself with some basic copywriting principles, which we'll, we'll walk you through um, in the next couple of slides. OK, so. Um, first steps, we recommend taking a course catered towards beginners because copywriting is it can be really overwhelming if you're just starting out. There's just so much information out there. Um, and we recommend the Nomad Copywriter Starter Kit, which we'll explain a little bit about that at the end, um, if you all stick around. Um, subscribe to newsletters or emails um, like from other copywriters or emails, um, you know, just go through your inbox and, know, and see like if you emails that you like or emails um, from other businesses or brands, um, take note of what you like about them. And then just, you know, in your day-to-day -day life, pay attention to copy that you that you love and put it into like the side for later. We um, Many copywriters refer to this as a swipe file. So it includes like a file of all the different um, types of copy that um, really inspire you and that you like. And then it um, is really good if you're writing copy to kind of refer to that swipe file as in for inspiration. Um, so those are kind of the first steps that we recommend. Okay, so three basic copywriting principles. I mean, Mary and I would love to just sit and talk to you for hours um, about copywriting <laughs> principles, but we we had a little chat and these are the three that we think will give you an immediate head start, the kind of juiciest, um, most lucrative tips. So knowing your audience, and I know Mary mentioned a little bit about customer research. Um, but if you if you know your audience, if you know what they want, then you can you can write um, you can write good copy. So always be asking the question, um, what's in it for me? W I F M. Always be thinking, what is it that your audience really really wants, and how do you find that out? You can ask them. Um, it's again, it's the listening. That's why we say being an empath, being a great listener, is um, so valuable uh, for copywriting. So really just be putting your audience first. Don't be thinking always about the product itself um, that you're selling, but be thinking about how that can um, 
that can actually help the audience. So let's take, um, say you're writing copy for a vacuum cleaner, um, rather than talking about the features, um, talk about how the actual benefit for, for the reader, um, how it can get into those hard to reach corners, et cetera. So think about how it fits into their life. Um, the second one, write like you speak. Um, so kind of abandon the gra grammar rules you learned in school. Um, it's okay to start sentences with and, with because. Um, when you're writing emails, don't write dear sir, sir, madam, um, yours sincerely. Keep it, keep it light, keep it chatty, write like you speak. Um, imagine you're talking to a friend. Um, and um, keep it, keep it simple when possible. Um, don't try to be too clever. Um, always just keep it as clear as possible. So as your reader is reading your copy, they can instantly get a sense for what's in it for them um and what the actual the key takeaways are that you're you're giving um it's not like you don't even though it's nice to add the the odd um flourish or um like vocabulary um this they simply can keep it the more the more likely your reader is to buy because confused people don't buy yep okay and remember the confidence will come so if you're just starting out and you're feeling like really unsure about things, I uh, promise that it does get easier and you will get more confident. Um, and really the best way to improve your copy is to write copy. So just keep practicing. Um, and on that note, we're gonna go into the next section on lending your first client. Okay, so um, contrary to what you might believe, to land your first client, you don't need a portfolio, you don't need a website, you don't need testimonials don't need market experience and yes you don't need to know people um you you don't need any of that um what you do need is a way to get paid like paypal stripe um there are whatever pro payment processor you use in your country um a place to write um google docs um, or a microsoft word and a way to communicate with clients which really could just be email and that is it if you have those things, you have what you need to get paid to write copy. Okay, so if you're thinking, oh, but I don't have an experience, I haven't ever written copy before, that's holding, that's what's holding you back. Um, really, the best thing to do is just to get stuck in um, and start writing copy because that is the only way to gain the momentum um, to turn this into a side hustle or a career or whatever your goal is. Okay, so next, uh, landing your first client on Upwork. I'm sure many of you have heard of Upwork, the freelance platform, um, basically uh, just where clients um, can post uh, job postings. Um, they have pretty much for any type of job and copywriting is a big, um, a lot of copywriting jobs are posted on Upwork. So um, Abby doesn't really, uh, Abby's been talking about Facebook because she's um, used Facebook a lot. I've used personally Upwork um, and that's where I've had the most success finding clients. Uh, the reason being that like millions of clients use Upwork to find freelancers on their new postings every single day. Um, Upwork takes care of invoicing and contracts. So you're always protected. Um, and like, for example, yeah, if a client says, oh, you know, I don't want to pay you for this work for whatever reason, um, as long as you're, um, you have like the hourly protection on Upwork, um, then you will be protected and, and get paid. So, um, and contrary to what you have heard, you can make a lot of money as a freelance copywriter on Upwork. Many people um, kind of say that it's, you know, there are a lot of kind of not so great clients on there and low paying work, but there's also a lot of really high paying work. So it's just a matter of finding it. Um, and as if you're starting out, um, regardless of whether you want to um, want to use Upwork or not, I think uh, for people who are just starting out, it can, can be a really good place to, to land like your first projects. Um, so how to land clients on Upwork. Um, first things first, create an Upwork pr profile, um, showcasing the different ways that you can help clients. Um, so really focus on like using those copywriting principles that we talked about as you're, um, creating your Upwork profile. Um, you don't just start out saying like, I'm a copywriter with, um, you know, X years of experience or whatever, um, or, you know, looking to work with these types of companies, um, 
you know, make it about your um, ideal client and their problems and how you can help them. Um, that also applies to your proposals. When you're sending out proposals, focus on what you can do for the client, read the, um, the job posting and see like what, if they list any kind of things that they're struggling with, um, talk about how you can help solve those problems for them. So one of clients that I found was like, which was an $8,000, um, project that I found in Upwork. I found because the woman was talking about how she just wanted to increase conversions. She didn't even mention copywriting. So I reached out to her and I said, like, you know, the copywriting um, can be a really important part of the, um, you know, piece of the puzzle when it comes to conversions. Um, and then I convinced her, she bought an audit for me. And then she was so impressed with the audit, she ended up hiring me for my services. And it all started just because I, you know, looking for keywords in Upwork and I searched for conversion and, um, she wasn't even looking for a copywriter. So many clients don't even know what, what they, what they need. Um, so, but yeah, as you're starting out, just search for those keywords, like copywriter, copywriting, copywriter in Upwork, and then apply to those, um, to those jobs, um, apply for China, just as many as you can starting out. So like small little jobs that will help you collect five-star reviews. Um, I honestly don't, I honestly work off of Upwork and I don't have a ton of reviews on my profile. I still manage to land um, some really great clients and have like a 40% um, response rate to my proposals. So um, I think the most important thing is that creating an Upwork profile, like showcasing the ways you can help clients, as you said, and then focusing on the proposal, like focusing on what you can do for the client. And then I will I'll let Abby talk about Facebook groups because she is the queen of lending clients <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, so I I love Facebook groups um, as a way to um, land clients. I owe my six-figure copywriting business to Facebook groups. Um, I had one client that I found earlier this year um, who I think I've since cleared over $30,000 of invoices from this one client, and it was all because she posted in a Facebook group, um, does anyone know a copywriter? Um, so why, why Facebook groups? Um, other than the, the reasons I've just said. So there are over 200 million business owners using Facebook. Um, you can instantly find and connect with business owners in any niche. Um, and there are thousands um, of business owners that use Facebook groups um, when they need to hire a freelancer. Um, so as an example, um, you'll see on the screenshot on the right, there are groups um, for, for copywriters. Um, there are groups called copywriting jobs. There are groups for... Um, local business owners, course creators, um, any of those groups, if you join those groups, there are people in there that will be looking um, for a copywriter. Um, so how do you do it? How do you land um, those clients in Facebook groups? So you start off by joining the groups for um, copywriting jobs. Um, so yeah, pop um, into the search bar, pop the word copywriting, um, and narrow it down to groups. Don't um, worry too much about joining groups for freelancers and copywriters, because that tends to be where other copywriters go rather than um, where the clients will go. So more look at things like hire a copywriter, for copywriting jobs, content and copywriting jobs, that kind of thing. Um, and also join the groups for the types of business owners you'd love to write for. So maybe you know that you'd absolutely love to write for um, yoga teachers um, or life coaches or um, musicians, whatever it, whatever it is, look for groups um, with these people in. So put that word again in the search bar, narrow it down. Um, and you will, you will see people will be posting things like, I'm looking for a copywriter, I'm looking for someone to help me um, write my emails. Um, so when you see those posts, um, just leave a comment um, and let them know who you are that you're available to help and again like Mary said really focus on what you can do for them um why and um, what problems you can solve if they've mentioned that in the post um but you know when you're starting out you don't need to get too hung up on this concept of pitching yourself really it's just about making that connection having the confidence raise your hand and say hey um yeah I, I can help um and and just taking it from there mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So, and landing your first client uh, using cold outreach. So cold outreach, just basically sending an email to someone that you don't know um, can also be a really good way of landing clients. Um, and, you know, it, it can, I guess, depending on like how personalized the email is, um, can have a really high success rate. 
Um, I've gotten some pretty uh, big projects from cold outreach. Um, I haven't calculated how much I've made from cold outreach, but um, at least like $10,000 um, just from sending out emails to people. Um, so one way to do that is just instantly reach out to brands that you'd really love to write for. Maybe make a list of um, some brands that you really like. Um, and then just keep in mind, like writing cold emails is, is really good practice for writing copy. So the more that you practice it, the better that you'll get at. So just think of it as kind of a, a learning experience and a way to just improve um, your copywriting as well. And then um, really just kind of, yeah. So how to lend clients via cold emails. So these are some tips that I found based on like, um, I've been writing cold emails for years and some things that have worked and not worked for me. So don't make the email all about you. Um, again, like this goes back to the basic um, copywriting principle that we talked about it. What's in it for me. So don't introduce yourself open with like a compliment or acknowledge something about, um, you know, the, the person that you're writing to their company, their story, um, just, you know, show that you did your research. And that's really the first thing like people get, especially these big companies, um, they can get so many emails and like the way to stand out is just to kind of do something a little different, show that you did your research, that you know who you're you're speaking to, and that already can make you stand out. Um, again, focus on the what's in it for me. So one way that one thing that I like to do is I offer like a free like five minute copy review. Again, do not keep you don't want to offer like a long copy review um, because I've done that in the past, and then many clients just don't really appreciate it when it's when you're giving away too much work for free. Um, but so offer like a, a short copy review, like reviewing their copy. Um, or you could offer like right in the email itself, a few copy suggestions. Um, like if you go to their website, you might see like, oh, you could, you know, tweak this headline to um, be like this and then maybe provide them with some suggestions of what you would change. Um, so this can offend people. So it's not like always, um, you know, you might get some people that you might get some angry responses, but if you say it in a way that's kind of like, oh, you know, I just, um, you know, thought that you you know, might want to hear my two cents just in a way that's kind of like offering a suggestion and not telling them like your copy sucks, <laughs> but that can be, um, some people might really appreciate that. And then if someone doesn't respond, it does not mean they aren't interested. So follow up. Um, and yeah, I need to take my own advice here. I don't always follow up with my cold emails, but when I do, I definitely find like a much higher response rate. Um, cool. Um, and before we move on to the next section, I know we're pressed for time here. Um, so um, just some bonus tips to land clients when starting out. Um, so even though I said you don't need a portfolio and I 100% stand by that, um, it can be helpful just to have a few samples ready. So if someone does say to you, yeah, I'd be interested, but can you show me just something you've written? Um, that doesn't have to actually be for a previous client. Um, you could literally just write and add, um, pick pick a company that you like um, for an issue you want to work in, like say you want to write for um, pet food companies, um, write an ad for an, one you made up or an email for one you made up. Um, because clients clients don't, don't care if it was for a real client or not, they just want to see a sample of your work. So it can be helpful to just have one of those handy. Um, and ah, this is like a controversial, um, this is a, a discussion of whether you should give work um, away for free when you're starting out. Um, personally, I think it's okay to do just one or two um, at the beginning. If, you, if you're if you not feeling confident, you want the practice, um, just because having a testimonial, having someone else say, um, this person wrote copy for me and it was great, um, just makes it, reduces the anxiety for new people hiring you. Um, so, if you want to, you could do um, just like one or two tops, just small, small pieces of copy, not like a long form sales page, just one email, one ad, um, just to have that, um, have that testimonial handy um, to put, put on your LinkedIn or whatever you're, um, you use. Um, this one, so leverage other talents you have. Um, so even though you don't, you might not have experience copywriting, you have experiences doing other things. Um, so perhaps you love to you love to travel. Um, I'm sure a lot of you do. Um, so if you're writing for like a travel company, yes, you might not be the copywriter with most experience, but you're the copywriter that's um, been to 
all the continents um, that's backpacked for years that knows what their customers want. So that can really play in your favor. Um, or if you play the clarinet, um, reach out to a local music shop, um, use your other talents, your other passions um, to give you, to make you stand out. Um, and the main thing, the most important thing really is just let people know that you started taking on copywriting projects. Like you'd be amazed how many people in your network know someone or know somebody who knows someone who needs a copywriter um, and actually just having the courage to put your hand up and say yeah I'm writing copy now um, doesn't matter whether or not you have experience and um, just being available the fact that you like writing that you want to write and that you're willing to learn and you're willing to give it a go um, that will go such a long way um, so yeah um, that wraps up our section on how to land clients um when you yeah and I'll just it. and I'll just say don't worry I've um people always said to me when I was starting out like reach out to your personal network I didn't have anyone like offer me any jobs in my personal network and I didn't have any portfolio or testimonials and I was still able to land clients um granted I did have a bit of experience in content marketing and and writing and all of that. Um, but I, you know, really copywriting is just about kind of proving to the client that you can do the job. So um, don't feel like, you know, if you don't have any other talents or if you don't know, have a big personal network, it's still possible to very much possible to land clients. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's just um, to try and inspire you to just think outside the box a bit. I mean, like one of my first clients, um, I was teaching chess to five-year-olds and I reached out to the founder and said, hey, do you need some help with the social media copywriting? Like the opportunities are there. Just keep your eyes open for them. Um, but yeah, absolutely. yeah let's, <laughs> let's move okay. on. Okay, I know, I think we're trying to wrap up. So we'll try to, Sorry, yeah. um, so I think we probably, most of you are already digital nomads. So you might already, you probably already know how to become a digital nomad. But for those of you who, who don't. Um, so uh, these are the things that we found as like digital nomads and part-time digital nomads uh, that have really helped us simplify your lifestyle. Um, you've probably heard this a million times, but the less things that you can have, the better. Um, I'm going to Thailand in a few months and all I'm going to bring with me is like a small backpack. And, uh, you know, I'm definitely not a minimalist, but I'm an aspiring minimalist, I should say. And uh, yeah, I just really think like the less things that you can travel with, the better. Uh, we just don't need all the stuff that we have. Um, decide how you want to live. Do you want to be like a slow traveler? Do you want to go to visit a lot of different places? Uh, do you want to have a home base and then just kind of travel part time? Um, set a budget for yourself and find the locations that will fit that budget. Um, don't make plans too for an advance. That's um, you know something I've wasted so much money on flights that I haven't taken just because I planned too far in advance. So I think. For me, the key has been like, it's really exciting when you're planning something, you just want to keep, I just want to, you know, plan, 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 and just um, kind of exciting, but at the same time, like find things with free cancellations or um, wait until you're absolutely sure, because oftentimes as a nomad, your plans can change at the last minute. Um, set a routine that suits you. Uh, notice that like one, you don't feel bad if you're not a morning person. Abby and I are definitely not morning people, um, as I think Abby said. <laughs> Um, uh, definitely more the like wake up, roll out of bed at 10 30, which does not make us lazy. We're just not morning people. So, um, <laughs> yeah. And then make sure that you always have a backup for Wi-Fi because, um, I've been in like Brazil and my Wi-Fi has just suddenly like, there's just the power has gone out, um, because too many people on the Island <laughs> in Florianopolis. And that was really stressful. Um, had to like miss some client calls because I wasn't prepared. So make sure you always have a backup for Wi-Fi. So I guess I will introduce my, or I've already, Abby's already introduced myself, but just a little bit about kind of like the different lifestyles that you can have as a nomad, um, as a digital nomad. So I'm based in Barcelona. Um, I'm like a part-time nomad, I say, because I travel for, um, as I said, I'm going to Thailand in a few, for like a few months. I was in Mexico for a few months last year. Um, so I'm much more about like slow traveling, um, slow travel. I like having a bit more stability. I started out um, six years ago as a digital nomad and after landing a remote job as a content marketer at a digital agency, digital agency, and I became a full-time freelance copywriter um, just over two years ago in September, 2020. Um, and yeah, so I'm, as I said, I much prefer slow travel to fast travel. I've lived in places like Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, France, and now Spain, where I've been for four years. Um, 
So, yeah, I mean, I think for me, I just, if I go somewhere, I like to stay for two to three months and really get to know the place. Um, not to say I don't, like, I just went to Berlin for a few days and, um, you know, had a great time and I went to visit Abbey in Cambridge. So I'd like to do those little escapades, but I just prefer, um, you know, slow travel to fast travel. Um, and I like having a home base, but I like to, you know, escape for weeks or months at a time. Um, so, you know, and then I'll, Abby will explain a little bit about how she's, um, you know, been a digital nomad. Sure. Yeah. So my experience has been slightly different. So, um, yeah, I left school and was basically just like, I want to travel, um, didn't have any money, um, and kind of Googled how to make money online, found out that you can get paid to write um, and fell in love with the idea of that. Um, so I, I did a lot of backpacking around Southeast Asia um, because it's more affordable to live out there because I could live on a couple of dollars a day. That just gave me the space to take on some um, kind of low paying copywriting jobs just to get the experience, build up, build my portfolio. And then, so I kind of nickel and dimed my way to um, making a living as a freelance copywriter um, just getting basically saying yes to everything um, until eventually a few months in I was able to actually um, I just kind of checked my invoices one day I was like huh like I've just had made 3,000 this month um, I actually can freelance instead of having like a full-time career um, which is what I kind of always thought I'd have to do um, and while I was um, traveling around Southeast Asia, um, to begin with, when I couldn't, um, when I didn't always have the clients coming in, I would offer my copywriting services in exchange for accommodation. Um, so I'd write up the hospital world descriptions to stay in hostels. Um, this kind of, again, with this being um, keeping your eyes open for opportunities, being savvy, being resourceful, um, just taking any opportunities to write copy, get paid to write copy and build your skills. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit about my story and Mary's story and how there are two very different approaches you can take. Um, like Mary very much jumped in, was like, I'm going to make this my career and did that. Um, whereas I just kind of, to start with, I just needed to make a little bit of money um, to, to live day to day and then eventually build that up um, to a point where I could be like, claim it as my career. Yeah. So there's no one way to do things like, you know, just find what, what works for you and you can use copywriting to just make, you know, $2,000 a month and work like, you know, 10 hours a week, or you can really turn it into a full-time career. So our next question, which brings, brings us to our next question, what kind of nomad copywriter will you be? Um, I guess if we have time, we can like post this in the, can then have a poll or Hi. Yeah, just maybe, yeah, just leave, leave a, leave a note, let us know what your thoughts are um, about um, how you see um, no more copywriting fitting into your lifestyle. Okay, just because we're crushed on time, we'll get right to, um, yeah, so if copywriting after this, you feel like it is something that you're interested in, um, we did mention earlier the Nomad Copywriter Starter Kit inside. Um, so this is something that Abby and I created um, about a year ago. We've got some really great feedback from new copywriters. Um, and basically, you will get all the tools that you need to become a Nomad Copywriter in five days. So we think that it's definitely possible to go through everything in a day or two and then uh, start implementing implementing what you learn and uh, become a nomad copywriter within five days. So oh, in, yeah. Sorry, you, you take this one. No, I was <laughs> going to say inside you'll find, <laughs> and then you go ahead. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to whiz, whiz through this. I know we're super pressed for time, but it's basically, it's a three-in-one ebook that shows you how to master copywriting basics, the stuff you need to feel confident charging clients to write copy. Um, the stuff we said about how to line clients, we go into actual detail of how to do that, um, how to create invoices, um, what to put in your proposal, all that good stuff, um, and about becoming a digital nomad, how to fit copywriting into um, the digital nomad lifestyle. And you're gonna get, um, you'll get checklists at the end of each to make sure that you actually get implementing and keep track of your progress. Mm -hmm. And you also get over the shoulder video tutorials for people who are more visual learners um, where you'll, there's different, we've gotten, we've got a, several video tutorials for you. So you'll get clear on the different types of copy you need to know. 
Uh, you'll know how to run copy audits, copy critiques with confidence. Um, so you can definitely charge like a minimum of $400 for these because um, uh, the client will get a lot of value out of them. So we'll show you how to do that. Um, how to create a Facebook ad, um, which Abby uses to charge $50 an ad. Um, and then, you know, the, how to close clients over Zoom um, for introverts. I'm definitely an introvert. So um, yeah, I think I, I'm not a huge fan of the sales process and sales calls, but um, we'll show you how to do that if you're not really a salesperson. Yeah, and then you'll get like all the like a ton of checklists and resources, templates for writing those cold emails, um, the sending client questionnaires, um, the is my copy any good checklist. You can just go through and be like, yep, yeah, I've done this, I've done this, have some confidence. A resource list to if you um want to get more more copywriting um inspiration um and a headline swipe file. Yep. Okay. And so um really Oh, sorry. I'll let you, I'll let you go ahead, Abby. This yeah, so really the, the, mm -hmm. we've got over $500 worth of materials in this. Um, just for you guys, we're um, offering it for $47. You can snag it using that link. Um, as we said, um, loads of people have been using it to land um, their first client. It's not about getting rich as a copywriter. It's literally just the stuff you need to get started, um, feel confident writing copy, um, and actually just start charging um, for your time getting paid to write um, in the next five days. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for spending this time with us. Um, it was really great to talk to you. We hope we've given you some ideas, hopefully inspired you a bit um, to, to start writing copy and consider copywriting as a career path for you. Thank you guys. Um, and yeah, let us know if you have any questions. And